Jaya Radha Marava Kunjabi Hari Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Kopi Jana Vallabha Kiri Vardhari 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 Yashura Nandana Padajana Randana Shura Nandana Padajana Randana Yashura Nandana Padajana Randana Shura Nandana Padajana Randana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Sing Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Mr. Pad Pranamahansa Parujika Charja Ashto Tarata Shri Shri Mata Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai Eskan B.B.T. Foundera Charja Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Parujika Charja Ashto Tarata Shri Shri Mata Divine Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakura Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnavinda Ki Jai Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakura Ki Jai Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai, Samaveda Bhaktivinda Ki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Goranga. So it appears that since the last two Mondays we didn't have class. Our students are boycotting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, huh? Yes. Well, 
I think we may have some participants online, hopefully. But we'll sally forth. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. On the second day of January 2024 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are in Chapter 4, in, four, uh, four entitled Transcendental Knowledge, uh, Text 13, page 200. Page 200. Chatur, Varnyam, Maya, Srishtam, Guna, Karma, Vibhagashaha, Tasya, Kartaram, Apimam, Vidhi, Akartaram, Abhyam, Chatur, Varnyam, Maya, Srishtam, Gunakarma vibhagashaha Tasya kartadam apimam Vidya kartadam abhyam Chatur varnyam maya srishtam Gunakarma vibhagashaha Tasya kartadam apimam Vidya kartadam abhyam Chatur varnyam maya srishtam Gunakarma vibhagashaha Tasya kartadam apimam Vidya kartadam abhyam Chatur varnyam maya srishtam Gunakarma vibhagashaha Tasya kartaram apimam Vidya kartaram abhiyam You'll get it. Word by words. Chatu varnyam, the four divisions of human society. Maya, by me, srishtam, created. Guna, of quality, karma, and work. Vibhagashaha, in terms of division, tasya of that, kartaram, the father, api, although, mam, me, vidhi, you may know, akartaram, as the non-doer, abhiyam, unchangeable. According to the three modes of material nature and the work associated with them, the four divisions of human society are created by me. And although I am the creator of this system, you should know that I am yet the non-doer, being unchangeable. Purport. The Lord is the creator of everything. Everything is born of him, everything is sustained by him, and everything, after annihilation, rests in him. He is therefore the creator of the four divisions of the social order, beginning with the intelligent class of men, technically called brahmanas, due to their being situated in the mode of goodness. Next is the administrative class, technically called the chatriyas due to their being situated in the mode of passion. The mercantile men, called the vaishyas, are situated in the mixed modes of passion and ignorance. And the shudras, or laborer class, are situated in the ignorant mode of material nature. In spite of his creating the four divisions of human society, Lord Krishna does not belong to any of these divisions because he is not one of the conditioned souls a section of whom form human society. Human society is similar to any other animal society, but to elevate men from the animal status, the above-mentioned divisions are created by the Lord for the systematic development of Krishna consciousness. The tendency of a particular man toward work is determined by the modes of material nature which he has acquired. Such symptoms of life, according to the different modes of material nature, are described in the 18th chapter of this book. 
A person in Krishna consciousness, however, is above even the brahmanas. Although brahmanas, by quality, are supposed to know about Brahman, the supreme absolute truth, most of them approach only the impersonal Brahman manifestation of Lord Krishna. But a man who transcends the limited knowledge of a brahmana and reaches the knowledge of the supreme personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, becomes a person in Krishna consciousness, or in other words, a Vaishnava. Krishna consciousness includes knowledge of all different pl plenary expansions of Krishna, namely Rama, Nasinga, Varaha, etc. And as Krishna is transcendental to this system of the four divisions of human society, a person in Krishna consciousness is also transcendental to all divisions of human society, whether we consider the divisions of community, nation, or species. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnana Shalakaya Chakshu Unmiditam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master Srila Prabhupada opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisances unto him and all members of Sri Parampara, the disciplic succession. So, in the previous verse, Krishna talked about how men desire, in the world, desire success and fruit of activities, and therefore they worship the demigods. Quickly, of course, men get results from fruit of work in this world. So now, in this present verse, Krishna is describing his system for organizing society. There's four uh, social orders, which we just described, means uh, the Brahmins, Chatriyas, Vaishyas, Shudras. According to their position in society, uh, the Brahmins are meant to be in the mode of goodness. They're meant to be the intellectuals. They learn sacrifices. They study the Vedas. And they are very important that on the basis of their Vedic knowledge and their qualification as uh, self-controlled self and peaceful and renounced and all the qualities the Brahmins are meant to have, clean, it's one of them. Uh, they, they advise the Kshatriyas, and the Kshatriyas are meant to take that advice because the Kshatriyas, being in the mode of passion, tend to um, get to be uh, somewhat fruitive and to lose the, the spiritual perspective. And so the Brahmins are meant to be the spiritual masters of society. The ultimate spiritual masters are the sannyasis, but in general, the Brahmins are. And the Vaishyas, they, they provide the wealth, actually. There's two main categories. The, the f farmers, those who engage in cow protection, agriculture. This is a society Krishna belonged to, you know, externally. Uh, and the mercantile men, you know, the bankers, they're also in the Vaishya community. Uh, when the agriculture is very successful, then you can also sell a surplus and you also become mercantile like that. But the wealth or even, uh, originates with them and the Kshatriyas have a right to tax them uh, at a reasonable rate. And uh, they also give charity to the Brahmins. That's a very important thing. The, the Kshatriyas and, Brahm and, and Vaishyas both give charity to the uh, Brahmins. The Brahmins, however, are meant to be austere. They're meant to live as simply as possible. And so they also give charity. They'll give charity to the Shudras and so forth like that and not live ostentatiously. As soon as they become enamored of material wealth, they get easy to corrupt because the Kshatriyas uh, can buy them off. They, you know, they, they'll give advice that the Kshatriyas want to hear rather than what, what's good for them. You know? So it's very important that the Brahmins live very simply. And the Prabhupada tells the story of Chanakya Pandit, who was a, Prabhupada, when he was, a, when he was a boy, he learned Chanaka Shloka. These are moral codes, and he would sometimes quote them in his classes. Uh, and uh, this Chanaka Pandit, he was advising a king, I think Chandragupta. And uh, one, one time the king, this, you know, started questioning his advice, and he said, well, I quit. You know, he wasn't saying, well, I have to tell, tell the king what he wants to hear so that he'll support me. He was living very simply and, you know, uh, so that he wasn't dependent on the king's largesse, you know. So there's all these things going on with the four uh, varnas, and then there's the ashrams. That's the other, the, the varn ashram. So the varnas is discussed in this verse. The ashrams are the uh, brahmachari, uh, grihasta, vanaprastha, and sannyasi. And uh, 
because that really the, the human life is meant for spiritual advancement. So this, this part of the Varnashram is very important. The society has to go on peacefully, so we have the Varnas. But within the Varnas, <coughs> there's also these ashrams. And in the uh, second chapter, first canto, uh, Sutta Goswami is explaining to Ma, uh, the sages at Naimasharanya. Sutta Goswami heard the original speaking of the Bhagavatam by Shukadeva to Parikit on the bank of the Ganges, and he memorized the whole thing, and he's now repeating it at this uh, conclave in Naimasharanya. And that's what we hear in the Bhagavatam. It's basically Sutta Goswami recounting what Shukadeva said and everything. So he gives, the, the sages asked him, uh, what is that supreme dharma where people can, Haribol, Bhakti Sukanto. Now we, we just doubled our attendance. Very good, thank you. <laughs> We're on page 200. So the question was, what is that dharma by which the soul can become completely satisfied and happy? You see. And he gives his famous answer in text 6 of the second chapter, which is uh Sabai Pungsang Paro Dharma Yato Bhakti Dharokshaje. Ahoitiki apyati yata yaya ma suprasidati. So by the, the Supreme Dharma is that which gives rise to pure devotion to Krishna, who's given this name Arhokshaja. Arhokshaja is a very interesting name. It's not any name like we have the Govinda and Madhusuda and all these things describing Krishna's Leela. Uh, it's, 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 it's made of three words, actually. Adha, Aksha, and Ja. Now, Ja is short for Janma. Janma, we know, is birth. That which generates. So, Aksha, Ja, is knowledge generated from the eyes, and by the eyes, extend to all the senses. In other words, the, the, the famous ascending process, what can we see, gathering on the scientific method. This is the material way of getting knowledge, is the ascending method. And so... Uh, Krishna is Adha Akshaja. Adha means down. He pushes all that knowledge down. In other words, he's transcendental to any knowledge that we can get just with our senses. The only way we can know him really is through bhakti. We can know him to the extent that we become purified and he will reveal himself to us. So this is the name for Adhokshaja, which comes up repeatedly. It's often used when it's talking about the beginning stage of devotional service. Because to, to worship God, we can't see him. How, how are we going to get faith? You know? So he's transcendental. We have to have that intermediary, the pure devotee, who says, yes, I can see him. And we, we, there's a lo long line of other devotees who have been purified and we're able to see him in the heart. And we, we, the revealed scriptures, we can re get him from the scriptures we have. So it, what do you have to have? You have to have faith. That faith is engendered by association with the faithful and primarily the pure devotee. So Srila Prabhupada came and gave us his association, gave us his words, and is basically gave, giving us association with Krishna. When we read these translations and these verses, we're associating with Krishna. These are the words he spoke, and uh, is being explained by the pure devotee. So we have, this is the great association. By that uh, association, our faith in Krishna his existence, his qualities, his powers, uh, the fact that we can have a relation, all that is built, is, is, is the foundational for practicing devotional service. So in this discussion of what is the supreme dharma, uh, he, gets to, he gets to mention, he, he mentions the uh, Barnashram system, because that, that's what Krishna is talking about in the 13th verse here, Shatura. So he says, Atak pumbi dvija shreshta varnashrama vibhagashaha svanuchitasya dharmasya which means that uh, Dvija Shrestha, he's saying, oh, best of the Brahmins. He, Sutta Goswami is speaking to this uh, very august conclave that is gathered to hear him speak the, uh, the Bhagavatam again. Um, uh, varna, the, in the divisions of the Varna and Ashram, Varna, Ashram, and Vibhagasha means the eight divisions. Su Anusitasya. The word is su, and it becomes svanustitasya in the Sanskrit, the Sunday. The, the, by by not, each of the eight uh, different divisions nicely performing their duty, what's the result? What is the goal of it? Dharmasya, sangsid here, the perfection is haritoshinam, satisfaction of Krishna. So the whole end of, since, he, since the goal of human life, 
you know, we're told in, in Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavad Gita and all the books, is to regain our original pure devotion to Krishna, our love for Krishna, which we all have. It's just covered by the impurities that we've, that we've uh, accumulated over many lifetimes. So we want, to, we want to try to purify our existence, our consciousness, by the process of devotional service, that, and in this way, uh, uh, reawaken our pure love for Krishna and go back home, back to God. So Varna, the Varna Ashram system, which Krishna created, we just read that in his, in his text. He's created the four Varnas. He also created the four Ashram. The whole purpose is to organize society in such a way that everyone can get a chance to progress toward this perfection of, de of devotional service. And that, that will please Hari. That will please Krishna. He's pleased really only by our efforts at devotional service. When we're in Maya and we're forgetting him and trying to please our senses, that's not pleasing. You know, that's something that he realizes. It's a disease that he has to try to help cure by giving the knowledge that you know, will cure it. So that's, that's the purpose of the, of the Varnas and the Ashrams. That's the purpose of the society, because that's the purpose of human life. There is a goal, you know, transcendental goal. So that, that's uh, important to understand. And uh, all of this uh, organization, society has to go on in a peaceful way, an organized way, with uh, opportunity for everyone to advance spiritually. But there has to be a material aspect. You have to hold everything together. I spoke about, I think last night, about yoga and shema. Was it, that, was it last night or maybe it was morning class? The yoga and shema, which Krishna says he provides, he carries personally for those who are always thinking about it. So yoga are the things we need to live. We need shelter, we need food, we need air and water, all of these different things and uh, so much. Uh, so that's the yoga. And shema is the security. You may be nicely fed and everything, but the, but the Mongols are coming over the mountain to take over. You know, I mean, you're not secure and you're panicky. That's not good. So Krishna will carry uh, all that we need in terms of yoga and shema, personally, for those who are always thinking of him. I personally carry. There's this nice pastime of one, one scholar was, was writing a translation, a commentary on the Bhagavad Gita, and he came across this verse. And he says, that can't be right. That Krishna personally, because Krishna said, I, I am carrying personally, I provide. So he crossed it out, he edited it. There's a danger of being an editor, I know. And so uh, then he went to bathe in the Ganges or something, and his wife was there at the home, and he heard a knock on the door, and there were two boys had come. Very beautiful boys, one with a dark complexion, one with a light complexion. And they had all of this opulent food stuff, you know, for cooking, you know, like raw material. What is it, isn't it? Oh, the tongues were cut? Oh, I just thought they had, had some, some marks on their back. Yeah, I, think, I don't think it was the tongues, yeah. And so anyway, uh, his wife noticed that. What happened to you? Oh, your husband, he, he, he beat us. A little bit. So he was shocked, you know. <laughs> so they provided all this opulent food stuff, and then they left, you see. And she, I guess she cooked, used it to cook, you know, and everything. Yeah. But she was angry at her husband for beating these beautiful boys, so she just sat down and ate herself, you know, which she's not supposed to do. So eventually, I forget the, the sage's name, I don't know if you remember. He came back, and he was surprised that she had eaten, because that's not the custom in India. The wife feeds the husband, serves him, and then she eats afterwards. So she said, yes, because why did you, we, these two beautiful boys came, and, and, and he wondered where all the opulent ghee and everything had come from. Yes, they gave it. But why did you beat them? He said, I, I, never, I never did. I never beat them. You know, what is that? Whatever. So then finally he realized, Hare Krishna, welcome. Uh, those shoes? You can't have shoes. <laughs> Take the shoes off outside. We go outside, yeah. Um... So he realized, oh, you know, I, those injuries are because I had crossed out that verse and, and then changed it. And that's what they took that personally. That was them. And so that, you, you understand, the, you know, that, 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 that Krishna and Balaram had come and bringing all these foodstuffs. And uh, they, sh they had supposedly been injured. And it's because he doubted the truth of the words in the Bhagavad Gita, that Krishna will provide everything if we surrender to him, if we become his devotees. 
and always think of him. That's that's Ananyas Chintiyanto. That's a stage of pure devotion. So let's go on see what Krishna further says here. Uh, we're on page two hundred in the book. Yes, please. Well, Vai- Vaishnavs, if they are able to uh, uh, progress and, and um, uh, uh, develop the qualities of a Vaishnav, they include the qualities of a Brahman, the cleanliness, the self-control, the simple living, the uh, learning, you know, getting knowledge. And I would say that not all Vaishnavs are really capable of, of doing that, you know. They can, they can still become pure, but they may not become great scholars, able to chant so many verses and things like that. But the, but the point is, is that a Vaishnav uh, gets all the necessary qualities that he needs if, with sincerity to progress in devotional service. And, and uh, the, the, the learned Vaishnavs are the best Brahmins. Otherwise, Brahmins can also be uh, corrupted, in, especially in this age. They have the intelligence, they know the mantras, but then they try to monetize everything, you know, and lord it over the, old, the other varnas, isn't it? And then the corruption comes, I'm just born as a Brahmin? In a Brahmin family? I'm a Brahmin, automatically. But Krishna always talks about guna karma, about the quality and the activity that has to be there. Probably gives the example, you may be, your father may be a, a judge, a high court judge, say, you know. Well, that doesn't mean you're a judge. You have maybe you have the best chance of becoming a, a high court judge because you, you've been that, but you have to develop the qualities. Go to school, get all the degrees and the, the qualities. So everything depends on guna and karma. We're on page two hundred, Prabhu. Welcome. So when I started this class, there was no one here, and I started singing the song, and then Krishna gave me some mercy, and Nelson came. And then Sukarno came, and now you're all come. So thank you for joining us. There's also devotees online. But we had le- the last two Mondays, last night we had a special program that wasn't a class. And the previous week, there was a special program up in North County that I went to, and there was no class. So maybe the regulars are thinking, well, they're not going to have it anymore. But I think gradually they'll come back. Anyway, thank you for coming. So we're discussing, we, uh, page 200, Krishna talks about Chaturvarnya Maya system, that Krishna created this system of the four varnas and also the ashrams, you know, varn ashram. And what's the real purpose of it? And I quoted a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam where Sudha Goswami is speaking to the sages in Saranya. And their question was, what is that supreme dharma How, by which the soul can become completely happy and satisfied? So he says, Savai pung sang paro dharma yato bhakti adhokshe je that dharma, that practice, which engenders and develops pure devotion to what Hokshija, Krishna, the transcendental Lord, which is, which I didn't talk, mention before, has to be unmotivated, means without any material motivation. When we say it's unmotivated, that's a little, not really accurate. Because everything, you aren't going to do anything without some motivation. We have a motivation to practice Krishna consciousness. We want to go back to Godhead. We want to become pure. We want to attain that state of absolute bliss by reawakening our natural love for Krishna. So we're motivated, but not motivated by material things. We're not motivated like, the, you know, worship uh, Indra, Chandra, or whatever, for some material motive. No, no, no. That we give up. And that comes up in the Bhagavad Gita. Those who worship the demigods, Krishna says, probably you quote this verse all the time, seventh chapter, Kamai Staistai Rita Jnana Papadyante Anya Devata. I don't know if you know this one. Those whose intelligence has been stolen away by material desires, they worship other gods for material benedictions. Papadyante Anya Devata. Tang Tang Nima Mastaya Prakrita Anya Devata. Controlled by their own natures, they'll have a certain god. And even if they get those benedictions, they're temporary. They're, you know, they're, they're wasting the time because uh, it says, Andavattu palamtesham tadbavalt yalpamedasam. Not very intelligent. Because, the, because whatever benediction, suppose you're, you actually do it right, you go up to Indra Loka. You live there for thousands, millions of years, whatever it is, enjoying Nanda Nandana gardens. But when your punya is expired, you come back here. Te tambukva swagalokam bisharam, chine punye martyalokam bishanti. Martyalokam, the world of death. 
even to heed Nama Manu Bhavan Kama Kama Alabandi. Thus, by following the Karmakanda section of the Vedas, which give you all these sacrifices, you simply, if you, it's successful, you go and then you come. And you're right back where you started from, in Marcha Loka, this world of birth and death. So there's no real percentage in worshiping the gods for material benefit. It's just another, it's just a, another variety of material desire, which is, keeps you bound up in this material world. Rather, we should direct our worship toward Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Because success there means we get out of this uh, world entirely and we don't come back. If you come back home to me, you don't have to go back here. We have life eternal. So that's, that's emphasized in the Bhagavad Gita throughout. All right, let's go on. We're going to ch chant chapter 14, uh, ch text 14 on page 201. Namam karmani limpanti Name karma palace biha Itimam yo bijanati Karma beer nasabadjate There is no work that affects me, nor do I aspire for the fruits of action. One who understands this truth about me does not become entangled in the fruit of reactions of work. Purport. As there are con constitutional laws in the material world stating that the king can do no wrong or that the king is not subject to the state laws, similarly the Lord, although he is the creator of this material world, is not affected by the activities of the material world. He creates and remains aloof from the creation, whereas the living entities are entangled in the fruit of results of material activities because of their propensity for lording it over material resources. The proprietor of an establishment is not responsible for the right and wrong activities of the workers, but the workers are themselves responsible. The living entities are engaged in their respective activities of sense gratification, and these activities are not ordained by the Lord. For advancement of sense gratification, the living entities are engaged in the work of this world, and they aspire to heavenly happiness after death. The Lord, being full in himself, has no attraction for so-called heavenly happiness. The heavenly demigods are only his engaged servants. The proprietor never desires the low-grade happiness such as the workers may desire. He is aloof from the material actions and reactions. For example, the rains are not responsible for different types of vegetation that appear on the earth, although without such rains there is no possibility of vegetative growth. Vedic Smriti confirms this fact as follows. Nimitta vaso srijanam sarga karmani pradhana karani bhuta bhuta yato by srija shaktiyaha. In the material creations, the Lord is only the supreme cause. The immediate cause is material nature, by which the cosmic manifestation is made visible. Close quote. The created beings are of many varieties, such as the demigods, human beings, and lower animals. And all of them are subject to the reactions of their past good or bad activities. The Lord only gives them the proper facilities for such activities and the regulations of the modes of nature. But he is never responsible for their past and present activities. In the Vedanta Sutra 2134, it is confirmed, Vaishamya Nair Grinye, Na sa pig shat vat. The Lord is never partial to any living entity. The living entity is responsible for his own acts. The Lord only gives him facilities through the agency of material nature, the external energy. Anyone who is fully conversant with all the intricacies of this law of karma or fruit of activities does not become affected by the result of his activities. In other words, the person who understands the transcendental nature of the Lord is an experienced man in Krishna consciousness, and thus he is never subjected to the laws of karma. <clears throat> One who does not know the transcendental nature of the Lord and who thinks that the activities of the Lord are aimed at fruity results, as are the activities of the ordinary living entities, certainly becomes entangled himself in fruit of reactions. But one who knows the supreme truth is a liberated soul fixed in Krishna consciousness. 
Okay, um, Nelson, do you know how to turn this heat off? Yes. Oh, very good. Please do that. It's getting a little warm in here. So, this, bo this uh, chapter is all about transcendental knowledge, but it's also about how we apply that knowledge to act to uh, what we do. So that we can act in such a way that we don't uh, perpetuate our entanglement in this world, but actually are able to gradually uh, become detached from this world and more and more attached to Krishna. So that, because what, your attachment, this is what will bring you back. It's off? Okay, and it takes a, it takes a little a second. To tell. So how to do that? That's, that's where it, it's very important to have a guide. A guide. Not only the book, but also the personal guide. How to live a life in such a way that you don't perpetuate your entanglement in the material world. Because if we don't have a guide, we're sure to be entangled one way or another. If we don't, just like if you go to a, probably would give the example, you go to a country, say India or Australia, I think also, you have to drive on the left side, I think, isn't it? Well, I know India is for sure. And uh, if, if you don't know that, it can be dangerous. You can get in an accident or certainly get a ticket, you know. Uh, so, you respond, so you need to know the, the laws. So we need to know how this material world is working and, uh, so that we can act in such a way as we can gra gradually become uh, detached from it. Because the, the basic mission of human life is to end the process of birth, old age, disease, and death. Krishna mentions that in the 13th chapter. Part of the uh, different elements of knowledge, I think there's 22 different ones that he lists, is janma, uh, mrityu, jara, vyari, dukkha, dosha, and darshanam. So uh, to understand the miseries of birth, old age, disease, and death, uh, the, the, the fault of that, anudarshanam, to be aware of that, am I, am I uh, ensuring my, uh, that I'm going to take birth again and, and have to go through you know, old age, disease, and death? Or am I doing things that are making, making me less uh, entangled in this world so that I'll be able to end that process, either this, after this one life or maybe another life? We've had so many different births, right? So now we're very fortunate to have the human life. That this is, a, this is a, a, a rare opportunity. If we just think of all of the different living entities there are, you know, just out in this garden, in the patio, every single plant, every single blade of grass is a different soul in there. It was once in the human body, it's become so degraded, you know. Of course, very fortunate to be in a Krishna conscious garden. So that, <laughs> so that uh, you know, it's, you know it's, it's a special birth. But still, it's, it's low consciousness, you know. So we want, knowing that, we said, oh, I should act in such a way that I don't have to do that anymore, if possible. At least let me make progress so that maybe after one or two more births, I can get out of here and go back to God. That's the, that's the mission. I love, I love to chant this verse. Many of and those of you who heard my classes, but there's, only, there's new people here, basically. I think Krishna speaks this. It's in the 11th canto of Bhagavatam. Maybe some other sage. So he says, you have, you have gained this very rare. Sudulama means very uh, rare to get. Uh, Bohusambhavante, after many, many births, manushim, human, human life. The word manushim, man, is very close, human being. Artadam, very important word. Arta means something valuable. In this case, it means the most valuable thing. And dam means that which gives. The human life alone facilitates the attainment of the, of the greatest, most valuable thing, the ending of birth and death. In other words, escape from the round of birth, old age, disease, and death, and return to our original nature in the eternal spiritual world. So it's artadam. But like all forms of life, anityam, it's not permanent. Time is, is passing. We don't want to waste any time. That's a big thing. Uh, so one has to be dira. Dira means consider the, these points and, and think, am I acting in such a way for my eternal benefit or for my immediate uh, you know, pleasure, which is keeping me entangled? We have to know how to act, what to do and what not to do. If you want to do anything in this world, you want to get a degree, you want to get a job, you want to learn to play, play an instrument or become a great athlete, you need a teacher, you need some instruction, and what will they set? They'll set out a, a whole set of do's and don'ts. 
I remember when I, I was a kid, my father was, bless him, he trained me in uh, music. I learned how to play a little flute, then I played a clarinet, then I played a big flute, and uh, I learned to play the tambura when I came here. So I had a musical background. So every time I would go, have a teacher, you know, I'd go, when I learned to play this transverse flute, they would say, no, 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 you, you, you keep the fingers this way and you blow this way, you know, and there'd be someone in instruction, and I'd have to re rehearse and have to practice, and come back. So that's true of anything. There's do's and don'ts. And uh, so, so th this verse is saying, don't waste time. Only in human life can you understand the urgency of acting in such a way that not just by the impulse of the senses of the mind, you see, but the higher intelligence. That's what differentiates us from the animals. Consider, okay, this is, this is going to give me some short-term pleasure, but if I keep doing it, it's going to result in long-term pain. Right? That's why you go to school, you know, the, the dangers, I'm sure that in every grade school, the dangers of alcohol, the dangers of drugs, you know. They may, be, they may give you some immediate pleasure, but you'll ruin your, your, your brain, your, you know, your future and everything. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Because long term, you can get a, you know, you, you can get a good degree and a job and you'll be wholesome, you know. Of course, that in itself is also maya. You know, some that, so one has to know what really is valuable and how we can get that transcendent. And this, you know, this mantra is a, so essential part of it. So what this verse says, okay, you've got the human form of life, and in the human form of life alone can you achieve the ultimate goal, artidam. So be, so, so be very sober-minded. And then, tunam, the next word is tunam, third line, tunam, without wasting time, immediately. Because the mind is always saying, well, I don't know, maybe I'll try something else. No, no, no. Start practicing devotional service. Tornam yateta, immediately strive. We have to strive. As long as your body hasn't died, as long as you have some facility. Strive for what? Nik shreyasa. This word shreyas is so important. The Prabhu would always, differ, our spiritual master would differentiate from prayas. Prayas is the immediate pleasure. This is what everyone's after. You know, how can I have fun now? You know, like, but that's suicide for the soul. Because that means you're under the dictation of the senses and mind, not the intelligence. Intelligence is serving the lower self, you see. The, lower, the, the senses of mind have to serve the intelligence, which has become illuminated by Shastra. So he says, Nikshreyasa. What is Nikshreyasa? The ultimate good? Liberation from this birth, old age, disease, and death. And Prabhupada's immortal phrase, going back home, back to Godhead. To re be reinstated in an original position in the spiritual world in a position of service, intimate service to Krishna, exchanging these ecstatic rasas forever. You know, no more birth in this world. You know, every day is fresh and new. You know, it's not, it doesn't get boring. So, so, the, so he said, Nikshay and then he said one more warning in the verse, Vishayakala Sarvatakshat, you've already experienced all these different varieties of sense gratification and all these different forms of life we just forgot, you know. And what has it gotten you? Another birth, another death, you see. So there's no percentage in it. But it's very hard to give it all up unless you have a substitute, unless you, unless you can develop the uh, taste for Krishna consciousness. And then after some time, he says, oh, those things I used to be attracted to, I can't even think of them anymore. You know? I know that that's, that, that's not good. I don't. And this is, the, this is the, the unique quality of Krishna consciousness. It's not just by a matter of will that you give something, you know, like this is the, the, the those who are just after... Uh, Yogic siddhis, you know, that's also an advanced platform. So that means you've you got to go alone, you've got to drill the respiration, and by the strength of your will and your, your uh, intelligence, you control the senses and you meditate on some mantra. But your goal isn't to, to get free of birth and death. Your goal is to become a powerful yogi and we have all these pow you know, powers that control people's minds and you can create something. And, you know, there's all these siddhis. That's also there, but they're all material. Yeah. But uh, don't see this can, can still entangle you in much mind and you're just Definitely. Definitely. There's so many stories in the Bhagavatam of yogis who are materialistic, you know, and uh, they become very angry because they're, you know, insulted or something like that. Or they become uh, sp uh, attracted by some heavenly damsel that comes down into the the, uh, the forest where they're meditating, you know. So, would be the best not to use them at all? 
Not to use what? The uh, powers? Yeah. For nothing, no for good, not the, 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 the best thing is to, to, to develop your relation with Krishna. Then you, then you get the, the transcendental powers to help pe people in the best way, which is to give them knowledge and give them uh, interest in Krishna consciousness. Because even if, if you're very, I mean, I'm not, it's not disparaging if you want you know, people doing good for others. That's good. But what can you do? Okay, we're feeding people, we're educating people, we've got the hospital going over here. But that doesn't help them to get to the ultimate goal of life, you see, of, of solving all the problems. Just like there's a, a similar thing. You can feed some, these so many people, but isn't it better to teach them how to farm so that they can feed themselves? <laughs> so you want, to, you want to teach them the knowledge by which they can get the best thing. Then that will be included. They'll also be able to, to, to live. Yoga, Kshema, Bahamiham, like I'm saying. If you become Krishna conscious and really sincere, then Krishna will provide you what you need. Not so, you know, more than you need, but he'll provide you a, a, a living, a simple living, and you'll be happy with that. You'll be satisfied with it because you'll be getting all of this spiritual nourishment. You see? You'll be, you, you know, you, the, 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 there's this great story about Yamunacharya. You know, Yamunacharya was, this, was the spiritual master of Ramanujacharya, very famous. So Yamunacharya was a very, very brilliant student, you know, raised in a Vaishnava family, became very learned, even as a boy, you know, 15, 13, 14, 15 years old, he was a scholar, and he was known for his debating skills. So he heard that the, that the, the king, he had a court pundit who he thought was the best, you know, and, and no one could ever defeat him in, in a debate, you know. So uh, Yamunajaya walks in, he's only 15 years old, and he says, I'm sure that I can defeat this pundit, you know. And the king, everyone was like, really? You know, he's just a kid, you know. You've heard this story? <laughs> so I wish I could remember all the, all the details, but so the king was, you know, he was very attractive and, you know, intelligent. So, the, so he says, okay, so you can, debate, you can debate our court pundit here. And if you win, I'll give you half the kingdom. He knew, he figured there's no way he could possibly win, you know, this man. And so uh, you might say, okay, I'll take the challenge, you know. So anyway, uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, next, I'm gonna learn all of the, he, 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 he had some three, three uh, uh, kind of trick questions that he asked this pundit. And the pundit couldn't, couldn't answer the riddles. And uh, so he defeated him. You know, <laughs> he gets the kingdom. So then he lives, I don't know how many years, maybe 10 years, as a king, you know. So he kind of lost his edge, as, with spiritual edge, you know. But he knew all, he, he, he remembered it. So at a certain point, one of his old friends from the ashram comes and visits him. He says, oh, nice to see you, you know, Prabhu. So he says, let's go for a walk. You know, he invited him, because he had his gardens and everything. So he said, walking, you know. And what he starts doing, reminding him of all these wonderful shlokas that they remembered back in the ashram, you know, describing Krishna. And they can be very sweet and tasty. Just like, I'll give you a sample, uh, Krishna Karnamrita. You know what that is? Okay. The Krishna Karnamrita is a wonderful book of, by a, a devotee named Bilba Mangal Thakur. And uh, Lord Chaitanya, maybe you don't know who he is, he's, uh, he uh, found this Krishna Karnamrita when he went to South India. And he thought it was such a great book, he had it copied and he brought it back and it became current in all of Gaudiya Vaishnava. So there's some, very, I'm not going to go into the whole story of, of Bill Mangal Thakur, but he was an amazing figure. But the verses are just so exquisite and t tasty, you know. So I'll give you some sample, okay? I put a couple of them into poems. One is, anyone can memorize these, you know. Describing Krishna. Madodam madodam babadasivibho. Madodam madodam vadanam madodam. Madhugandhi madhusmita meta daho madhodam 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 madhodam. So, sweet, sweet is my dear Lord's form. Sweet is still his face, so fair. But his honey scented, gentle smile is sweet beyond compare. You know, so he was sharing verses like that. So Ramanuja was getting into it, you know, and all of the, the bliss was coming back that he experienced. So he just kept walking. Walk and walk and walk, walk, walk right out of the kingdom. Gave it up. <laughs> he went back to the ashram and became Yamunacharya, the spiritual master of Ramanujacharya. So Yamunacharya, now this, this verse is quoted twice in the Bhagavatam. 
this, this one, next one I'm going to give you. He's, he's, he's composed this verse. Uh, well, here's, here's how the verse goes. Yadavadi mamacheta krishna pada dabindi namanamana sadhaman yunditam rantum asid. Tadabadi bada nadi sangha me smaya mani bhavati mukhavikaru sushtu nishtivanancha. So he's saying, ever since I have been tasting uh, every, newer and newer spiritual pleasure by serving the lotus feet of Krishna, Nanda Nandana, ever since that happened. Then, since then, whenever I happen to remember, because he was a king for so many years, I, when, I, when I remember my dalliances with the court, courtesans, you know, you know, he has a harem, you know, I just spit at the thought. I'm not attracted to it. I just, ah, I don't want to think of that, you know. Literally, he, he spits. And he goes on remembering, you know, relishing. The so that's, the point is, is that the taste of serving Krishna, even, even in the beginning state, and this, this mantra has opened up this world for all of us. You know, I was like 25 when I learned about this. I had been living in New York and was just a regular guy, you know. And, uh, but I was interested in yoga, and I took up yoga, and I eventually came upon this mantra, and I heard about its glory. So I started chanting it as my meditation mantra. And that's what drew me to find out more about Krishna and learn about the Hare Krishna movement. This is back in 73, 72, 73. So it, it, it doesn't matter who you are. If, you, if you're able to chant with some concentration and... Uh, you know, you have, you have enough peace in your life so that you can maybe half an hour a day, you know, you can really focus. Then it's going to transform you. It's going to give you a taste that you never had before. And it doesn't depend on your old. I'm now 76. It's 50 years down the road. I joined in 73. It's already past 23. 2023. So, but th these verses are they're ever fresh. The things I, you know, tried to do and enjoy when I was 25... I couldn't even do now. If I, if I was thinking, oh, now I can't do that anymore, I can't do that anymore, oh, my life is ruined. No. But there's still this Hare Krishna mantra is sweeter than ever. And these verses, you know, I'll give you another sample since you're not, because this is good, because you're new. Then we have to, we're going to have a nice kirtan. So, here's a nice little verse. Uh, what it means is, his flute emanates entrancing sounds for the cowherd girls whose love abounds with the clever cloud complexion lord who's dancing upon the Kalindi shore. It's a nice little meditation. You don't need a video machine, you don't need anything, you know, you can just chant that verse and you have the verse, you see the pastime. So these the, the, our great acharyas like Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, Jiva Goswami, they wrote all so many uh, literatures like this, and you can be fully satisfied serving Krishna and sharing these with others. You know, this is what what Lord Chaitanya would do. They would just hear and chant beautiful uh, accounts of Krishna's pastimes, and it's fully satisfying. It doesn't it, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter you know anything. So, so it's, not, it's a spiritual experience. It's directly to the soul. Whereas all these other things we try to enjoy, eventually if the senses get weak, you know, or you burn them out, then they become sources of pain instead of pleasure. But, this, but Krishna consciousness never becomes a source of pain because it's directly the spirit, contacting the spirit. So this is unheard of, but we can cultivate that even in, the, even in this age with the power of this mantra. You know, this is the... So, the, the, I, of course, I wrote there's a, some verses about the mantra. This, this is a key verse. Hare nama, hare nama, hare nama, I pake varnam kalon nasteva, nasteva, nasteva gatadanyata. Brihad naradiya puran. If you want to achieve the supreme goal of life in this age, when dissension and chaos abound, there is no other way, there is no other way, there is no other way that can ever be found. But to chant Krishna's name, but to chant Krishna's name, but to chant Krishna's name with a stout-hearted vow, and to pray, O oh Lord Krishna, O oh friend of the poor, let my head ever under your lotus feet bow. So that's, that's the great benediction of this age. What is it? Uh, twelfth candle of the, of the Bhagavatam, near the end. Oh boy, okay, we'll have to save this for the end because they're going to blow the conch and open the curtains. I'll still be sitting here. So all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, we'll resume tomorrow. Hadi Hadi Bo.